in the book, I uh, emphasized that uh, nationalism had uh, very major successes. It was actually part of the effort in the 20th century to create healthy communities. So the idea was that um, there were peoples that had been disadvantaged, uh, whether it's the Jews, uh, other ethnic groups, uh, and having a state that was their own uh, was a way of creating a homeland for them and really creating a healthy community. The problem was that in all of these states, and with emphasis on militarily powerful states, and particularly the emphasis in this book is on my own government, as it must be, that's the one for which I'm chiefly responsible, um, in uh, militarily powerful states, this nationalism became malignant. And so there's this constant preparation for warfare. And whereas a civic nationalism in which uh, citizens support one another and it, uh, it actually transcends the narrower ethnic nationalisms that many people are, are fleeing from, for example, when they come to the United States, uh, that's beneficial. But unfortunately, because the most powerful states have turned this into a militaristic version of what could have been a healthy paradigm. Um, uh, militant nationalism uh, is the, the dominant form today. Is, uh, it, militant nationalism is today the dominant form of nationalism. So throughout the book, as I explain, I, I'll use nationalism in reference to this malignant problem that we have uh, unless uh, it's qualified in some way, for example, by calling it a positive nationalism. And I make reference in the book to individuals like Gandhi, who was a nationalist, and contrast Gandhi with Adolf Hitler, who was also a nationalist. But these are obviously two very different versions of nationalism. So yes, uh, at least theoretically, a positive nationalism is uh, very much remains a possibility. Unfortunately today, uh, just because of the what Eisenhower called the military industrial complex and because of related ideological and cultural components of that uh, in our culture, uh, nationalism has become a, a dead end in effect. And I think that we have to transcend that. And we do that by looking at the uh, the framework of international law and uh, our personal responsibility to become, uh, to make our democracy a viable democracy and the connection between international law and democracy, the, this necessary connection. And then of course, in the process of this, creating healthy local communities and moving towards a healthier global community than we've had in the past. And by becoming involved in this at the personal level, uh, expanding, uh, realizing your own growth, your own potential. And so it's very much connected to personal well-being as well.